get started with this. So I think the stuff that we're going to talk about today and on Tuesday will be your biggest pain in the neck, okay? Ooh. So if you're having trouble already, I'm sorry, <laughs> but, but it's, it's bound to get a little more interesting. Um, so as I said before, kind of understanding location using latitude and longitude primarily, and UTM, Universal Transmercator, and a little bit of state plane. So we're going to talk about the coordinate systems and kind of <laughs> being able to locate yourself on the Earth's surface. And the lab today will be using a paper map, uh, the, the uh, township and range maps that we used the other day, the uh, seven and a half minute quads. And we'll work with those, and you'll get to review a little bit of, of township and range with that as well. And I'll be here to, to help you out. So um, the chapter that you had to read for today includes latitude, longitude, geographic coordinates, and UTM, and state plane, and it is a lot of reading. Um, so I may decide just to cover um, a portion of this and then finish it up on Tuesday. We'll just kind of just decide how glassy-eyed everybody's getting. Um, but you need to know enough UTM to be able at least to do the lab, uh, I think. So I'll take a look at that. So um, there's a, a lot of terminology in this. So we're going to talk about kind of this, these three different aspects of uh, location. And then um, when we're talking next week about map projection and scale, um, this will come into play again because um, how we decide the size and shape of the earth is really important as to how we determine different what are called map projections. So um, the, w the reason that we, you know, use maps is they're, they're great for communicating information um, and they also will often include a really nice reference system so that I can tell you where I am. So again, this idea of absolute location. So on a map, I may have a reference grid that I can tell you go to, you know, this particular location on the map and you can find it um, and know what I'm talking about. In order to create a good reference grid, you have to kind of know a couple things. And one of them is you have to know the shape of the earth and you've got to know the size of the earth. Um, and so first being able to determine those two pieces of information were critical in order to develop the, the whole reference system for the Earth. And um, in the fourth century, um, Aristotle did this for us, the kind of the first person known or recorded that, that was able to determine uh, these characteristics. And it's, it's just kind of an amazing feat uh, you know, I, if I had a brain like that, I would be, I don't know what I'd be doing, but um, I don't know, I might be doing this. But anyway, uh, so one of the things he noticed that, um, he noticed that the arrangement of the, the celestial bodies changed as he traveled north. So they didn't stay in the same location. So, and you guys have noticed that, right? So as you move someplace, the North Star is in a different location also at different times of the year, or Orion may show up in a different place um, than it is in, in the Northern Hemisphere. So he noticed that there was a slight change to that. He also noticed that when he watched <laughs> ships sail away from him, that as they went farther and farther, the ship didn't just get smaller and smaller, the bottom of the ship disappeared, and then the mid-mast, and then the top mast. And he was able to look at that and think, well, the only way that could happen is if they went over some curve, right? If they were going flat, it would just get smaller and smaller. But he actually noticed this. And then he noticed the circular um, shadow of the Earth um, on the moon. So he kind of put all of these things together, which right there, it's kind of like, what kind of brain did this person have? Um, and then kind of to, to uh, really figure out the Earth's dimensions, he was able to use, um, angular geometry or circular geometry. And what he did was he noticed that on a certain day, 
If he looked straight down a well in, in the town of Sion, he could see when the sun was overhead at noon, he could see straight down to the bottom of the well, that the sun just completely projected down in the well. And then he noticed later that on that same day at noon, another year, the sun did not project straight down but actually projected in an angle. And so he was be able to use those two pieces of information and the distance between these two cities to figure out what the arc had to be between these two cities using the angle, calculate that on out to 360 degrees as a full circle and get a really good approximation of um, the, the circumference of the planet, which is just mind-boggling to me. That is just phenomenal. I mean, and he didn't even have a calculator, right? He's just doing this in sand or whatever. <laughs> no, no. He probably had an abacus or something to do that. So what we know is that the, the Earth is not round, right? We all kind of think about the Earth as round, but it is what is called an oblate spheroid. Um, it's more of a squished kind of football-looking shape, um, and that's part of due to the gravitational pull. As the, um, the Earth spins around its axis, it gets this equatorial bulge. And so we get this kind of um, different shape. So it's a little bit uh, wider in the circumference than it is from north to south. And so different people over time have recalculated um, the ellipsoid or the shape, the shape of the Earth. So there was an ellipsoid calculated in 1866, um, which actually approximates the shape and size of the United States really well. And so that's been used for most of the map productions that we, that we use. Um, and now we've got satellite imagery and satellite capabilities which have uh, created more ellipsoids and much more accurate ellipsoids. So there's one called the WGS 1984 ellipsoid. And, and that's used m in more current mapping. Yeah? Um, where do you expect that the Earth will be in North America? North America, yeah. So that is just uh, so North American uh, centric, isn't it? <laughs> right, 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 right. So they would use a different uh, maybe ellipsoid for other places in the world to kind of approximate that. Yeah? It's just, it's just that equatorial pull, so it's kind of bulging out. Is it continuing to bulge? No, it's not getting bulge bigger and bigger. No, it's pretty it's pretty static that way. So yeah. Because it reports about yeah. the upper limit of the planet. So, but in actuality, the true shape of the Earth is called a geoid, a geoid. And this is because when we look at this previous, we get this kind of smooth shape. But what we know is the surface of the Earth is not really smooth. We've got really deep. Uh, Marianas Trench Canyons, and we've got the, the Alps and the Himalayas or Himalayas, depending on who you want to talk to. And so we've got that real, um, real true shape, absolute shape of the Earth. And so we, that shape, the geode, is often used when you're trying to get very detailed elevation data. But for most of the mapping that we're doing, that's referred to and based on the ellipsoid. And so here's kind of a, a comparison. So here is the real Earth. The geode has kind of averaged the height and the, uh, the depths, and then the ellipsoid has smoothed all of that. So we've got kind of three different examples of, of the surface. Now, in order to start measuring uh, the, the size of the Earth, one of the things you need is a control point, right? That is, or, or a set of control points. And so here's an example of something you might see, these are called brass caps. On the map, you'll see these as indicated as a BM or benchmark. And so often they're um, surveyed points that have the actual elevation or latitude and longitude. And this little divot here is where the stadia rod is put in, so it's got a very precise uh, and accurate location. So. Um, <coughs> In order to understand how big the Earth is, you need a series of control points called a datum. And so a datum um, is based on this general shape of the Earth, so whatever ellipsoid, and then using that general shape of the Earth, you set up a set of surveyed control points that are very, very, very accurate. 
Now, once I know where I am on the Earth's surface, based on this datum, then I can start measuring and calculating the rest of a grid system. So when you think of uh, being able to identify a grid system, you've got to start with an ellipsoid, which gives me my general shape of the Earth, and then I'm going to go and find a set of control points that help me start my mapping very accurately, and then I'm going to actually make a projection based on those control points. Yeah. There are, s there are several <laughs> ellipsoids that have been developed by different countries, and by their scientists and their researchers, and then there are many, many, many more datums. So it would make sense if I want to map the United States that I base my datum on a U.S. set of control points. If I want to map Saudi Arabia most accurately, I'm going to start my control points in Saudi Arabia. So when we look, uh, I can show you some examples. There are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of datums and control points and many ellipsoids. So if you're saying you want to map the entire United States, but you don't know the limit, but you've got nine more points that you can use to add up that number. So they, it just depends on who they is, right? Right, so, who's doing, right, so who's, doing, who's doing the work. And there is an international standard, probably um, WGS 84, and that's mainly <coughs> defined by who had the money to do the research in the beginning and who's driving that. So. Um, great question. Um, when we look at the topo maps that we used um, on Tuesday and again today, you're going to notice in the corner that there's information about that map. So NAD 27 means North American Datum 1927, and that was based on this Clark ellipsoid in 1866. So that's how that grid system was developed based on, on these older data. Now, now, currently you'll see uh, NAD 83, which is North American Datum 83, and it's based on the 1980 ellipsoid or the WGS 84 ellipsoid. So all of that information um, can show up on map. And when you're looking at um, a whole map of the world, if I have a map that was based on NAD 27, and a whole map that a whole world map that was based on NAD 83, I'm not going to see much difference. They're going to line up, and I may never even notice that different datums were used. But if I zoom into Lane County and I have data in different datums, I may see those lines not quite line up because I've <coughs> zoomed in, and those small differences of a few feet are going to show up on, on, a, on a map that's showing less area but more detail. Okay, so we're going to be able to see that. Um, so we're going to talk about geographic coordinates today and then on Tuesday talk about projections. And so when geographic coordinates are kind of based on this idea that the Earth is just a nice even sphere, okay, no bumps, no geode, no ellipsoid. We're not taking into account for any irregularities. We're just making it a nice sphere. And we use that for small-scale maps and world maps, right? So if I want to make a big map of the world, nobody's going to navigate by that. Um, but I want to show thematic data. I'm, that's going to be fine. Another word for this coordinate system that we're talking about is a graticule. So sometimes you'll see um, directions in a, in a lab that says add the graticule. And what they're talking about are uh, lines of latitude and longitude or parallels and meridians. So both, both are used uh, interchangeably. And so parallels are lines that run east and west. So they're kind of like um, belts around, around the equator and then progressively north and south. Um, and what they do is measure the angle from the equator to the North Pole. Right? So, and we'll look at a, at a cutaway of this in a minute. Meridians are lines that run from north to south, but they measure distance east and west. Okay? And I think some people had, we had that discussion a couple days ago when I was talking about latitude and longitude measuring different, different directions. So in uh, most Western culture, we start measuring uh, longitude from what we call the prime meridian. Okay? 
which runs through where, Chana? Uh, Greenwich. Yeah, Greenwich, <laughs> Greenwich, England, right. So the prime meridian is considered zero degrees longitude. It's the beginning, right? So how many degrees in a circle? 360. So if I start at Greenwich, England, and I travel east all the way back to Greenwich, England, then zero degrees longitude and 360 degrees longitude are the same place, right? And I've traveled 360 degrees of a circle, right? So I've, I've been moving. Now, sometimes we talk about longitude as east and west of Greenwich. So you take 180 degrees, which is halfway around the world, you split the globe and you open it up, right? So that Greenwich is in the middle, and you've got east of Greenwich up to 180 on the right side and west of Greenwich up to 180 on the left side. And so then I've got 0 to 180 and 0 to negative 180. And I'll show you what that looks like. And that kind of mapping is what's done a lot in the world because it's hard to, it, well, instead of north, south, east, and west, we tend to use positive and negative because it's better for calculators and computers. Do I have that other image? Yes. So let me just move into. Um, so here's the, the meridians, and you can see they converge at the pole. Parallels never touch each other. They never cross each other, um, and they go up in equal bands to the North Pole and the South Pole. So the parallels divide the, nor the world into the Northern Hemisphere and the Southern Hemisphere. And the meridians can divide the world into the Eastern Hemisphere and the Western Hemisphere. So let's look at this degrees idea for measuring north and south. So here is the equator. So that's zero degrees latitude. And if I were to cut away the plane of um, the, the Earth and draw an angle 45 degrees, this would be 45 degrees longitude, I mean latitude, 45 degrees latitude, <laughs> because I'm 45 degrees up from the equator, okay? 90 degrees is straight up, so I've got this complete square angle. Um, 10 degrees would be here, 20 degrees, 30 degrees, 40 degrees, 50, 60, 70, 80, and 90. So with latitude, I never go above 90 degrees. It's either 90 degrees northern or 90 degrees southern. And so Oregon is at about 45 degrees north latitude. That's our location on the Earth. Anybody ever been to Fossil? Fun place. Is it? Right, the 45th parallel is, out, uh, I think, a little bit north of Salem or right in the middle of Salem. Yeah, so you'll see that. So you're, you know that you, if you're at the 45th parallel, you are halfway between the equator and the North Pole, right? Because that's 45 and 45 is 90. So that's parallels. Um, and so I was talking about separating the world at 180 degrees. So this is zero degrees longitude. So how, what is the radical here? Four, six, eight, ten, twelve, three, six, nine. Yeah, these are each 30 degrees in longitude. So here's 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, 180. Okay? And here's 30, 60, 90, 150, 120, 150, 180. All right? So I can talk about eastern longitude or western longitude. And I can talk about northern latitude and southern latitude. Um, what did I do back here? Okay, so when I talk about, um, anybody remember math and you talked about quadrants? Anybody remember math quadrants? So if I'm making um, a plot, I have got a quadrant, this quadrant number one, and all the values in quadrant number one are positive, right? Both the X and the Y are positive, right? Over here on this side, quadrant number two, the y is positive and the x is negative. If I move down to quadrant 3, both values are negative, right? Negative x, negative y, and if I move to quadrant 4, the x is positive and the y is negative. That's the same with your coordinates in latitude and longitude. 
So if I point at this point right here, so this is 30-30, 30, 30, 30 degrees latitude, 30 degrees longitude. And the way I would write this is with a, a bracket and then 30 comma 30, right? And because they're both positive, I don't have to put any symbol and I don't have to write north, right? They're both 30-30. Latitude is always first. Longitude is second when we talk about it. Not the same with math. Right. You, if we're using just no, if we if you want to use letters, then you have to do north or south. But if we want to use just numbers as computers uh, prefer, we're going to assume if there's no symbol, it's north, and if it's a negative symbol, it's south or west. Right. So this point here would be minus. No, I'm sorry. Wrong. 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 Latitude is first. It's still positive. So this is 30 comma negative 30, right? This one here would be negative 30 latitude, negative 30 longitude. This one is negative 30 latitude, positive 30 longitude. So it would be negative 30 comma 30, all right? Latitude is first. We say the latitude first. So if I'm looking at this, okay, whoa, excuse me. If everybody's answering the question, then nobody can hear anybody, okay? So let's just, let's just let, me, let me be have my control issues met today, okay? So I'll start with here, and then if anybody over here has another question, okay? So I'm looking at this location, at this graticule in quadrant four. So I've gone down 30 degrees, right? So it's negative 30. And I've gone a positive 30 longitude. So it's negative 30 plus 30. I have a question. Is it like below, below the equator is only for latitude? Below the equator is only for latitude. So if you're talking about down here, my latitude is negative, but my longitude is positive. Right. Anybody over here? You guys were talking. Was there a question over here? No? How about over there? You good? Yes, sir. So, well, in math, we do the x equals zero all the time, so it's backwards. Is that how it's done? Yes. 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 yes, in math, it's completely wrong. In math, we talk about x, y, right? So in math, you would have to write it the other way around. In latitude and longitude, we talk about y, x, latitude, longitude, OK? Good point. I was hoping somebody would bring it up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's completely backwards in math because this is the x-axis, right? And that's the y-axis. But if you really think about it, I'm talking about moving up latitude, moving down latitude, and moving over longitude. So I don't know why we talk about latitude and longitude in that order, but that's going to be my assumption when I read your test answers, and that needs to be your assumption when you read my test questions, right? Because I won't always put 45 degrees latitude, comma, 37 degrees longitude. I'm just going to say 45, comma, 37. And the assumption is latitude and longitude. Okay, so I would, you know, I would uh, print this out. I would play with this as far as plotting squares. Maybe we'll do that on Tuesday. I'll do a little quiz. And we'll just play with some plots on that. So um, who feels kind of confident about this? OK, Rachel, I'll let you go first. Would you just go put your finger on, um, I have to count now. Don't, don't look like I'm counting. Uh, 60 minus 30. Do you need a pointer? <laughs> You can do it over here. You can come up here and use the mouse. <laughs> I should have made a, a, a shorter one or a taller person. You can probably use <laughs> Yeah, that's right. 60 minus 30. So 60 is latitude, minus 30 is longitude. And these are domain squares. Right, those are all in 30. So the latitude's first one. So she's going up to 60. And then the positive 30? Minus 30. Minus 30. So that would be the location of 60 minus 30. Okay, does that make sense to everybody? 
Okay, Johnny, want to try one? Okay, okay. How about minus 30, 60? So minus 30 is the latitude. positive 30. That's the location for that, okay? All right. And how do you write the degree sign? Alt 248. Alt 248 will give you the degree symbol, okay? So that's pretty easy, right? Okay. So now, what I want you to know is that one degree of latitude is about 69.2 miles, okay? And there is a typo in here and I hope somebody finds it because I forgot to fix it on the one that was uh, posted. So we'll, we'll see if there's a, there's a number difference, but we'll, we'll figure it out here. Okay, so one degree of latitude is 69.2 miles about. Um, longitude at the equator, it's about 69.2 miles. So if I look at this graticule, 30 degrees would be 30 times 69, right? At, at the, uh, and, and also for, for latitude, so 30 times 69 is a bunch, like 270 miles, something like that. And longitude, this would also be about 270 miles, right? Um, at 45 degrees longitude, however, it's only about 49 miles for longitude. Why is that? That's right, because these are converging. So down here, these lines are far apart. But up here, they're closer together. So this topographic map tells us the same <coughs> number of degrees in longitude and latitude, but it's really numeric. If we were at the equator, this topographic map would look like this. Okay. Because the distance. All right, so if one degree of longitude or latitude is 69 miles, am I going to be able to find the, the hidden treasure if you just give me whole latitude and longitude? I'm going to be digging a lot. What's 69 times 69? A big number. Well, 70, so that's 490 about. That'd be 490 square miles I'd have to dig up to find the treasure, which is 40. Thank you. See? Mathematician over here. Yeah, that's a lot of area. So we need to be able to get closer than that. All right. So we can divide each degree. Come on, let's make a, make a decision here, Lynn. We can divide each degree into a minute. Where did my minutes go? Come on. Seconds, yeah. Nope. How did these get out of order? I'm so confused. Okay. So each degree, oh, I just had the title wrong. Okay, I'll fix this before I repost it. Each degree can be divided into 60 minutes. And it's kind of like one hour can be divided into 60 minutes, right? And so one minute of latitude is about one mile. That makes a lot easier digging, right? Um, and so... The thing about latitude and longitude when you're talking about degrees and minutes is that if I have a location that's 10 degrees, 58 minutes, and I travel two more minutes, I've actually traveled a whole nother degree, right? Because 58 plus 2 is 60. So I have to take that whole minute and add it back to my degrees, or that whole degree and add it back to my degrees. <coughs> Right. So just th think about this. Um, you might want to sketch this down. Let's say you're at location uh, 11 degrees, um, 45 minutes. 11 degrees, 45 minutes, and you travel 20 more minutes in the same, in the same direction. What is your new location? So let's 
let's take a look at this. Hold on, where's my pause? Where's my pause? Start at pause. Yeah, I did restart instead of uh, start at pause. No, I should have hit restart instead of brand new, but we'll just go with this. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, then good. Um, so now second. So ignore that this says minute. So now I can take each minute and divide that into 60 seconds, right? And, and each second of latitude is about two-tenths or two hundred, uh, hundred feet, okay? So now I can get really pretty accurate if I'm using, uh, using minutes. Again, 60 seconds is equal to a minute. So if I'm at this location, 10 degrees, 59, 58, and I move two minutes north, I'm going to have 60, or two seconds north, I'm going to have 60 seconds which turns that into another minute, which turns that into another degree, and my new location is 11, okay? So I'll have you do that on an exam. I'll give you um, a location and say I'm moving one way or another, and, and what is, what's my new location? We could practice that a little bit. So I mentioned this a little earlier. Um, if you want to write down... Uh, for a computer or your GPS unit or your calculator, you could write 45 degrees, 3 minutes, 45 seconds north latitude, 120 degrees, 4 minutes, 46 east longitude. And the calculator and the computer cannot deal with that because you've got symbols and words. So another way to look at longitude and latitude is called decimal degrees. All right. So this is degrees, minutes, and seconds. This is another format, decimal degrees. Um, and so this is the same location uh, as the one above, and that's the same location as that one. So, and we just talked about you hold the Alt-248 to, uh, to get the degree. So I want you to be able to calculate um, or to compute decimal degrees and degrees, minutes, and seconds given any format. And there are lots of um, computer programs that will do that for you, but we'll talk about some others. So let's uh, look at this program and or at this location. So I am at, at a longitude. So I'm in uh, the Eastern Hemisphere. I'm 45 degrees east of Greenwich, 45 degrees, 55 minutes, 59 seconds. And I move one second more east. What's my new location? I'm going more east, so I'm adding up. Everybody agree? 45 degrees, 56 minutes? Okay. How about if I move one second west? So I'm going back toward the prime meridian, which is zero. 58 seconds, yeah, I, I subtract, I go 58 seconds. So one of the things I would recommend when trying to do this is to draw that grid. So I would just kind of sketch this out on an exam so that I know if I'm going east, I'm adding up, and if I'm going west, I'm, I'm going the other direction, okay? So that will help you do that. Yeah, oh, I had animation, I'm not gonna do that. Okay, there we go. All right. Um, I don't think I need to beat that dead horse, do I? Hmm. Yeah, this is a little more difficult if you're in, yeah, we should look at this. So um, if I'm in the Western Hemisphere, so I'm 45 degrees west of the prime meridian, okay, and I move east, which means I'm going back toward zero, I need to subtract this time, right? because I'm heading back towards zero degrees. If I'm at that location and I head west, then I'm adding, all right? So again, looking at that grid, um, or I'll just, I wish I could draw on this thing. That would be so nice, and we could capture that as well. Um, so we'll, we'll look at that again with the whole grid in a minute. All right, so now, I want you to be able to convert from DMS, which means degree, minutes, and seconds, to DD, which is decimal degrees, and those are the terms that are used. So when I'm, when I'm converting, I want the degree with a decimal after it, all right? And so the first thing I'm going to do is set aside that 65, 
and put a decimal after it. All right, so that's easy. And then I'm going to divide the minutes by 60 because there's 60 minutes in a degree. And I'm going to get, so if I take 32 and divide it by 60, I get uh, 0.5333 repeating. All right. Now I'm going to divide the seconds by 3,600 because there's 3,600 seconds in a degree. So I take the 15 and divide it by that, and I get uh, 0 0.004167. When I add those two together, this is my the decimal that I get. So I get 65.5375. And so that's how I convert DMS to DD. So why don't we try that? Has anybody got, uh, you guys know where the calculator is on your computer if you need it? And I find this, this converting back a little more difficult. So if I want to convert from DD to DMS, I'm going to, again, set aside my degrees, so 65 degrees, and then I'm going to multiply the decimal, the whole decimal number, by 60. Right? Um, and I get 32.2500. So the 32 represents the number of minutes. So now I have 50, 65 degrees, 32 minutes. I take what's left of my decimal and multiply that again by 60, and I get 15 decimal zero, and that's my second. So maybe it's actually easier, right? The reason I don't have to multiply this by 3660 <coughs> is because I've already multiplied it twice by 60. So in, in effect, I am... I am multiplying that end part twice, so it gives me my same, my same direction. So let's try that over here. Nope, that's not it either. Ah, oh, conversion. How about that? Thank you. There we go. Um, oh, there used to be a great one. You know, things change, right? Let's see what this one is. Calculator. Oh, maybe that's it. Nope. Well, this might work. Okay, so um, I can go from decimal to minutes and seconds or from minute and seconds to decimal. So let's put in my, let's just assume that's a latitude, 47, uh, let's see, 47 point, what did I get for that one, 2588, 2588, and I want to go decimals, two degrees, so there I get it, and it gives me my, my output there, or if I go... Uh, 47, <coughs> nope, so I can fit it in here. So there's a lot of these out here, which are pretty amazing. Um, and I just go minutes, seconds to decimal. Oh, it's decimal degrees. Hang on here. Okay. Yeah? Um, considering this is basically a decimal thing on a graphing calculator, it has that built in. Oh, nice. Nice, nice. If nice. people want to know how to do that on a PCI-82 or a Windows machine. Okay, great. Yes. I think those, for the rest of the term, when we look at remote sensing, those calculations aren't critical. But these calculations are conceptual. So I need you to know them. I need you to know how to do that because it's all based on the 6060. Okay. So I won't give you the formulas for this. Um, the rest of the term, I'll give you the formulas. But, but this one, I do want you to be able to remember. Um, the other thing people need to know is how many inches in a foot and how many feet in a yard. And th it surprised me that a lot of people don't have that knowledge. It's not stuff they've used a lot. Um, but that's a pretty common set of numbers to know. And you may not if you've used methods all your life. So on a topo map, so let's see if I can do this.
Anybody confused about that so far? Okay. What is that doing? I have no idea what that's doing. Okay. All right. So one of the things we want to do is be able to measure smaller increments. Right, Siobhan? measure increments in between that. And so I have these paper rules, and what I have done is I take my ruler and I lay it down at the bottom of the mat, which is 44 <coughs> degrees, and I lay it up to the two and a half minutes, right? So I know that this piece of paper from here to Yeah. Uh. 